So how do you think number 99 thinks about his legacy at this point in his career? Well, he... He's big on legacy, and he doesn't want to be known as a defender that accomplished so many individual things but never won a Super Bowl. But he also told me this. If he, if he wins a Super Bowl, there's a strong possibility that he could walk away from the game and, and retire. You may be trending on that. I love the NFL because we could all attest to one thing. Absolutely anything could happen. I mean, if we went back to a year ago and said that the Los Angeles Rams trading for Matthew Stafford was going to be the thing that got them into the Super Bowl to begin with, I would have looked at you kind of funny, although that's exactly what I said in my trade video. On the flip side, if you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, I think we could all agree that there wasn't a single person in the entire NFL that predicted that the Cincinnati Bengals would make it this far this year. As a matter of fact, in the beginning of the year, I was making videos concerned about the fact that Jamar Chase was having trouble catching footballs. That was actually a narrative, and that looks like a very laughable narrative looking back now, doesn't it? Ultimately, a lot went on today from rumors in regards to Sean McVay's retirement and Aaron Donald's retirement, all the way to of what's gonna happen next for both of these teams. So before we get to the content, we're giving away $500 to the subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel. We're giving away an additional $500 to any of our followers on Instagram. Now that we get all that out of the way, Break! Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Today was filled with absolutely hysterical narratives leading up to the Super Bowl. I mean, one of the names that were trending that I was shocked to see trending was Cam Newton because Joe Burrow walked in looking like this, and that is pretty much what Cam Newton was being roasted for for dressing like over the past, I don't know, three years of his career. But funny outfits aside, there was only one other thing that pertained to this game that dominated the news today. And that's the fact that Drake spent over $1.5 million in Bitcoin betting on the LA Rams. Jokes aside, it's the fact that Aaron Donald said that he is considering retirement if the LA Rams are to win a Super Bowl today. Now in a vacuum, when you look at Aaron Donald's achievements, you might be thinking, why on earth would anyone ever consider retirement at the age of 30? Bear in mind that Aaron Donald was drafted in the 2014 NFL Draft, and he's currently 30 years old. But when you take a look at his statistics and his achievements, this man is one of the most decorated defensive NFL players of all time. And here's the thing that bums me out. I remember the Dallas Cowboys looking at him in pre in pre-draft workouts and I was praying to the heavens that we were able to get this man on our team. Unfortunately, the Rams took him one pick sooner and one pick before us. And as a result, we had to watch one of the greatest ta defensive talents in NFL history play for an organization that actually knew how to make the most out of his talent. It's such a shame that Aaron Donald's talent didn't get wasted on the Dallas Cowboys. Jokes aside, take a look at his achievements, man. Three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, 2017, 2018, and 2020. Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2014. A seven-time first-team All-Pro from 2015 to 20. 21, the Pro Bowl every single year that he's been in the NFL. Then you take a look at the amount that Aaron Donald made throughout his career, and you kind of understand why this man might not want to play a down of football ever again. Throughout his career up until this point, this man has made $97 million. So if he is to retire, which according to Rodney Harrison, he is considering retirement, then he is leaving potentially $50 million on the table. Which brings us to the actual game. The very first play that I thought was absolutely critical for the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams was the Cincinnati Bengals going for it on fourth and one. This play indicated to me that Joe Burrow may be feeling a little rattled there. You know those times in Madden when you automatically pick the wide receiver you want to throw the ball to? That's what Joe Burrow did with Jamar Chase in the first quarter. He had T. Higgins wide open in the flat, ended up making the wrong read, turnover on downs at the 50-yard line. Matthew Stafford was able to get the ball, make the right plays, find Cooper Cup for a beautiful gain before eventually finding Odell Beckham Jr. for a touchdown. Now, speaking of Odell Beckham Jr., he is probably the biggest storyline of this game, but we'll get to that in a little bit. You know how Jalen Ramsey's getting paid all of
of this money to lock down the opposing team's best wide receiver. Well, in the at the end of the first quarter, Joe Burrow was able to find Jamar Chase for a remarkable gain. I mean, this was fantastic coverage by Jalen Ramsey, but the reception Jamar Chase was able to make with one hand over here is absolutely unreal. Now, Jalen Ramsey was able to fortunately make up for it by breaking up a pass that Joe Burrow intended for T. Higgins in the middle at the end zone, which would result in an Evan McPherson field goal. The score would be 7-3 to three at the end of the first quarter. The Rams were absolutely clicking on all cylinders on offense with Odell Beckham Jr. leading the way with 52 yards and a touchdown just over one quarter of action. Daryl Henderson was then able to come up with another gain of 25 plus, and it seemed like Matthew Stafford was getting absolutely anything that he wanted out there. The Rams would come back and find Cooper Cup for a yet another touchdown, but would fail the extra point attempt, which would then result in the Cincinnati Bengals coming back and scoring a touchdown via a Joe Mixon to T. Higgins touchdown pass. This is the first non-quarterback to throw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl since Trey Burton in the Philly special. And this is where things would get just a little froggy, ladies and gentlemen. After one of the greatest halftime shows in NFL history, including an upside down 50 Cent who's trying to play tribute to his own video from almost 20 years ago, 50 Cent kind of looks more like 75 cents if we could be honest, but the man is like a multi-billionaire at this point, so I guess you could be fat if you're a multi-billionaire. Also, he has a history of taking a specific type of juice, and once you get off the juice, unfortunately, that's how your body ends up looking like. Other drama from the halftime show include Eminem kneeling when the NFL told him not to kneel. Aside from that, I'm not going to lie, that was the greatest Super Bowl halftime show I've ever seen since the Bubble Bowl. The storyline then turned to Odell Beckham Jr. getting one of the most bizarre injuries I think I've ever seen in NFL history. Bear in mind that Odell Beckham Jr. tore his ACL a year ago, so I'm not sure if that had something to do with it, but as a result, Odell Beckham Jr. was out for a decent amount of time and questionable to return. Regardless, the Rams were up 13 to 10 in the Super Bowl at halftime. And bear in mind that they're 47 and one, including the postseason when leading at halftime under Sean McVay. The start of the second half was where it got a little interesting. T Higgins was able to break wide open for a 75 yard touchdown reception, despite Jalen Ramsey being on him. Now you could look at this play and tell me whether it's a face mask or it's not a face mask or an offensive PI or not an offensive PI, it doesn't matter the refs counted it. I'd say the most crucial part of the second half was the final drive that the Los Angeles Rams would make. The Rams would able to go on a clock eating drive, scoring the final touchdown despite a lot of ref ball being involved in it. And then Aaron Donald was able to make the play of the game on fourth and one on Joe Burrow, who definitely needs a better offensive line if he wants to succeed in the NFL to give Matthew Stafford, Odell Beckham Jr. and Aaron Donald their first First Super Bowl ring. All in all, man, this was a significantly better Super Bowl than last year. It really felt like any of these teams could have won. As a secondary Los Angeles Rams fan and a Los Angeles native that probably will never get to see the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl, just being honest, I'm very happy for the LA Rams. I'm also really excited for the Cincinnati Bengals. Bear in mind, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow are still on rookie scale contracts. This team needs to go into the offseason build that offensive line around Joe Burrow because if he was able to do this with a very weak and porous offensive line imagine what this man could do if you build around him even further this is just year two of Joe Burrow's career obviously every career has ups and downs yes I know we looked at Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and said wow these two have never lost a playoff game together but whenever adversity gets thrown at NFL players that's an opportunity for those players to use that as motivation in order to build upon their careers. That's what happened to Sean McVay and Aaron Donald the last time they were in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. And I have no doubt in my mind that the Cincinnati Bengals have a very bright future ahead of them. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the Super Bowl? Honestly, I give it a nine out of 10, man. It was a really exciting Super Bowl. The halftime show was awesome. Make sure you subscribe, turn on our notifications, drop a like because we got this out to you guys super duper quick and I hope the quality didn't take a hit. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and we have a ton of news videos coming to you guys in the morning, man. I'll catch you guys then.